to say. Huh. Look at the dogwood. loop in Arkansas and we're hoping that we'll be able to catch the eclipse from out here. We're gonna be out here a few days and then we're hoping that a couple of days before the eclipse that night where we're aiming to camp we should have service according to some comments in the app formerly known as Gut Hook far out. <laughs> I always forget the name of it. Uh, so we'll check when we get there and see what the cloud forecast is gonna do. And if it's gonna be hopefully clear, we'll stay here. And if not, we might have to bail out and head north somewhere where it will actually be clear because we didn't come all this way not to see the eclipse. Well, we made it to camp in the dark, <laughs> but we didn't really night hike. Now we're about to set up next to the river. Oh, how I've missed my new place. <laughs> it's not funny, but when did this happen? I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, it's sticking through, a, you know, a good uh, oh my God. maybe half inch, quarter inch. Oh my God! So How are like, you gonna get it out? So when I would step on a rock, it would push it in. It's a wonder all you have is a bruise. Well, I'm glad you solved the problem. Ooh. We're gonna 
jacket and this hoodie thing. I don't even know how to be. This loop in total is like 26 and a half miles or so. And I would say the only thing that would be somewhat iffy for a beginner is there are a lot of water crossings. Now, the good thing about that is there is a lot of opportunity to have water <laughs> so you don't have to carry a bunch of it. But the downside of that is sometimes the water crossings on this trail can get pretty high, especially after a rain. So it's just something that you have to look out for and plan for, watch the weather, and just you know make sure that you're not coming right after a rain that could make the levels too high. But there are websites that you can check the water levels out at online. So it's something that you can look ahead at. Wonderful. A commode with some sunshine. What more could you ask for? They even have showers if you so desire. I must say, if you're looking to hike this trail spring, and specifically this year, early April, has been a beautiful time to do it. There are all these little wildflowers everywhere, and spring has sprung, and the dogwoods are blooming, and I had debated on whether or not to bring my hat, just because I was like, oh, Arkansas, we're gonna be under trees. But even the leaves are just getting grown in and budding out so i'm really glad that i did bring it It feels good to be back out here. I mean, it did even the first day, but just kind of getting back in my groove and <laughs> realizing like, okay, maybe nothing bad is hopefully gonna happen. Uh, 
and just kind of getting comfortable with it again. It, it's really been a, a weird process altogether um, to be kind of intimidated to do the thing that you love most. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, but uh, I think there's some uh, nervousness, of course, because also being pregnant my first time back and uh, just the array of things that I feel like probably most women fear or are concerned with when they're going through that. I, you know, I thought that maybe you didn't start worrying about your children until they were like out of the womb. Not the case. It's like with that first test that's got two pink lines, you, the worrying kicks in. It's like that mom mode is immediately there. Do you have names lined up? Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> it's a boy, um, Bratcher, and uh, its middle name would be, or his middle name would be, <laughs> Rodney's middle name, which is Winfield, so it sounds very pretentious. Bratcher Winfield. And Bratcher is my papa's middle name, James Bratcher. I told my papa that I, would, I wanted to name a boy after him. But Cora was his, Cora May was his mother's name. So my great grandmother's name. And uh, Rodney's grandmother is Cora, so that worked out. We just decided Cora May fit. So my daughter and my dog would have the same middle name. <laughs> but won't know till it pops out what it is. So like- You would call it a- uh... Nagleria now. What is that? It's a brain eating parasite. Oh my god. Sleeping in my duplex for the first time in forever was wonderful it always feels like home sweet home and I don't know you know you can go day hiking and it's much better than not spending any time in nature but there's something to be said for being out in nature and having everything that you need on your back and I don't know and just like sleeping in nature you're just it's your home you're more one with it than if you go on day hikes. So I'm certainly not knocking day hiking. And I mean, that's what's been keeping me sane since August when I ended up getting helicoptered off trail and, you know, I've kind of been restricted to just day hiking since then. Um, but if you're a day hiker and you've been wanting to get into backpacking, I promise you it is it's a whole different beast, but it's amazing and it's worth it.
Since this is my first time backpacking pregnant, I can definitely notice like some differences. First of all, my baby bump is not super big. It's still just a bump, but it is not so comfortable to uh, bend over <laughs> and like capture things. Um, when I squat down with my pack on, that's usually not a problem. I mean, it's a struggle, right? But like, it's more of a struggle now and I have to undo my hip belt. <laughs> and uh, sleeping on my stomach is just not, not comfortable. So it's just side to side now when I'm flopping on my sleeping pad. Honestly, it's a little weird to be using a hip belt with the baby bump. I feel like I'm mashing it, but I suppose it's well protected in there. <laughs> Uh, my doctor told me I'm fine to backpack as long as I stay below 8,000 feet. But speaking of hip belts, I am rocking a new pack on this trip. I've got the ULA Ultra Catalyst. It's definitely the biggest pack I've ever owned. It's a 75 liter, but my stuff fits really well in there. And it's rated to hold up to 40 pounds, which with all my camera equipment makes sense. The pack itself weighs about two and a half pounds. So it's just a little bit more than some of the recent packs that I've used in the weight of the pack itself. My favorite part so far is that they offer the loop option attachment on the bottom of the pack so that you can attach your shelter and I haven't had that since the arc haul. It's carrying pretty well so far on this trip but I'll be excited to use it when I'm not pregnant too so I can have more of an apples to apples comparison. I did go with a large hip belt to make room for the bump and as it grows so I may have to go back to a medium at some point but as long as I can cinch it down tight enough I like larger hip belts and I'll stick with that because they cushion my hip bones better. I've had some that like stop halfway around the hip bone and that's not comfortable so I might be able to stick with the large and I meant to ask ULA if they can customize a hip belt to have one side of the hip belt without a pocket so I can hook my camera there instead, but I forgot. So I might reach back out to them about that and get a replacement anyway. But yeah, so far, so good. Well, they probably figure it'll die eventually. <laughs> it burns the whole <laughs> Eagle Rock loop down.
<laughs> well, fortunately, most of my nausea is gone. Unfortunately, there is still some happening. So it's like mainly first thing in the morning, like, I don't know, it's a little queasy, but uh, usually mine starts kicking in in the evening. In the first trimester, there's no way I could have backpacked uh, because the, the food, I, I, I just, I was very limited on what I could stomach and uh, not throw up. And I mean, I was still throwing up last week. Uh, I went to the movies with my stepdaughter and I had to let some exit into the popcorn bag while we were, we were watching a movie. So, you know, it is uh, it is fading out for the most part, which I am very grateful for. But any of y'all women who have gone backpacking in the first trimester while they're having extreme food aversions and nausea, props to you. It is eviction time, so these little critters don't get squished and dehydrated in my tent. <laughs> Come on, you got to go. You need little flies. Come on. It is game time because we got to go claim our spot on the mountain to view the eclipse tomorrow if the clouds cooperate. <laughs> we were thinking we might have to bail out, but it looks like from the predictions that really going anywhere else doesn't necessarily make sense. So we're just going to stay here and hope for the best, but we're heading right now to Brush Heap Mountain. We stayed last night at Eagle Rock Vista on Brushy Mountain. And it was a windy night, a little bit of rain, so we didn't get out as early as I had lied to myself and said I would. But uh, we've only got like a mile and a half up to the top of Brush Heap Mountain. We're hoping we could camp up there. If it's not suitable for tents, we might just cowboy camp to make sure because I don't know. We just want to make sure we got a good spot. We're going to do our best. See what see what happens.
it was a breezy night up here on the what is this called the brush heap mountain vista on the brush oh, heap okay just on the summit more or less of brush heap mountain <laughs> and i don't know how we squeezed two tents up in this one spot that's really not even one spot with briars and rocks but we did because we have low standards so anyway uh but it's finally the day it's eclipse day and uh we're gonna be chilling up here well scorching up here in the sun until the eclipse and i assume a lot more folks are gonna be piling in soon so i need to tear this tent down what well it's better than no setup wow you can see nothing with these on you can see the sun I literally just stare at this the whole time with these. Yeah, that's what they're for. I mean, I know, but I'm just like double checking. <laughs> this is so cool. Yeah, I haven't looked in any way, but just very briefly. Just like a little Yeah, in totality, you take the glasses off and look at it with your eyes. Oh, really? Thank you for telling me how it goes, because obviously... <laughs> I mean, you can do it now if you want. <laughs> I am really excited to see the eclipse. It's been unfinished business, if you will, since 2017 when I was on the Pacific Crest Trail. And... We didn't quite hike north enough to be in totality. And while even upper 90s percent is uh, still awesome. I mean, it's cool. You can see 
that it gets significantly darker, but it's almost like a, a large cloud covers the sun or something. And we could have hitched ahead and whatever, but time was kind of of the essence that year to try to get to Canada before we got snowed out. So anyway, it's something that I've wanted to do since then. And, but I'm really hoping it's gonna actually happen and it can be something that is completed on my to-do list or bucket list. Driving all the way to Arkansas for the eclipse and it's cloudy. First contact is in 15 minutes. Is it really? Yeah. I don't think these clouds are right on in 15 minutes. This is our current situation now. It has cleared up a whole lot. Oh, I think I see it. Looks like someone took a little nibble out of a cookie. I want to be watching when it closes up. Right now, it looks like Pac-Man with a more curved mouth. This. this is so exciting. I can't wait to see what it's going to look like. We'll just take a nap. <laughs> then you can just time travel. Yeah. Does it feel colder to you? Man, that big old hunker cloud's coming. But it's it's noticeably darker out here now. Turn around, bright eyes, turn around. It looks like a toenail. They might start chirping like the bugs. Or like coyotes might start howling. Really? Yeah. I feel bad for- I hear an owl. Did you just hear that? Uh -huh. <laughs> I feel bad for telling you all this because- Why? Because it's six minutes away and you can just see it for yourself. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> if it happens, like, but I want to be paying attention. Do you hear it? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 
So it thinks that it's getting evening. Uh -huh. It's dimmed out. Oh my God. Oh my God, I see a star in the sky near the, the. Ah! Oh my God, it is freaking me out. <laughs> ah, look at it, oh my God. Holy crap. Oh my God, that gives me chill bumps. Oh, it makes me want to cry. That is so pretty. Whoa. <laughs> I can't deal with this. This is like blowing my, I have never seen something so freaking pretty. See, there's like a little star there. And there's another one right there. I don't even know. I like, I can't hardly stand this. This feels fake. Holy crap, I'm only. put the glasses back on oh it makes me sad that we can't see I am okay I want to see that again like every time I ever can that was I don't know that was amazing put it in reverse and do it again <laughs>